All right, uh, let's go a little bit more on this. I, I wanted to go back to this pin here, and remember this pin had a position within a diameter of 12. Now if it has a position within a diameter of 12, remember what that was, it was like a, a cylindrical tolerance zone that extends the length of the feature there. So what is the perpendicularity on this pin right now? I mean, how much can the pin tilt? Well, it says it can be positioned within 12, so that means it can jostle around inside a little tolerance zone within 12, and I guess it could tilt inside at a tolerance zone, like a straw in a pop can, right? It could tilt off. The axis could also tilt like that. So what it is is we have a free perpendicularity with position. Position controls perpendicularity. Now, position of 12 is okay, but perpendicularity within 12 was not acceptable. So what they did is they refined the orientation of it. They said the perpendicularity has to be tighter. They said, okay, now I want the perpendicular to be a diameter of 2. Now, what does that tolerance zone look like? Well, let's see. That would be a diameter of 2, and the perpendicularity doesn't locate anything, right? It will not locate. It just checks the orientation of the pin. So that tolerance zone would have to fall within the 12,000 zone would fall inside. Now the tolerance zone doesn't fall within, but the axis of the hole must fall in both zones simultaneously. So it restricts the pin then from tilting more. Exactly. So let's see if I if I drew a little <coughs> picture of that for you. See this is going to be the, the 12 zone. This is not the pin. This is the tolerance zone of 12. I had and that, to draw that's this. a tolerance zone of 12 there. Okay. I that's had, the position zone. I had to draw that really big so you could see it. So there's your diameter of 12. And now what you've created is you've created a perpendicularity tolerance zone of 2. Now, just like Al said, the perpendicularity does not locate you, so that zone is free to float. And now the axis has to lie within both zones simultaneously. And that red zone is allowed to move back and forth to accept that, that hole. What this reminds me of, the analogy I use, is that uh, let's say that uh, you had somebody you wanted to uh, put a flagpole in your backyard. You said, okay, come and uh, put the flagpole. And you say, really, it doesn't matter where you put the flagpole, kind of somewhere in this general area. That's all I really care about. The guy comes in, he puts the flagpole in crook, and he said, there, there's your flagpole, it's in that area. Well, no, that's not what I wanted. I, I wanted anywhere in this area, but I wanted it nice and perpendicular. So that's what they did here. You see what they gave it? They gave it a large position tolerance. I don't really care where you put the pin. That's not important. But what is important is that pin is perpendicular to that face. That's, that's critical to my assembly. So this is a way that you can actually uh, refine the orientation of it with two feature control frames. Now, two feature control frames, I always get the question now, what's the virtual size? Well, actually, you have virtual, two virtual sizes. You have a virtual size to ABC, which we already calculated, but now we have a new virtual size to A. So what would be the virtual size just to A? Well, I guess you do that the same way. Let's see, we have a pin, the maximum material condition on a pin, that would be 253, right, the largest pin, and then it could tilt within two. So if it can tilt within two, it would appear larger. It would now be 255. That's right, 255. So we have two virtual sizes. We have a virtual size to ABC of 265. And we have a virtual size of 255 to A.